Well, there again, everybody, it's the Plowboy, Plowboy's Ghost Channel. Uh, they had a few requests for uh, people wanting to see how I make my cartridges for my 1853 Enfield rifle, 577 caliber, and my JP Murray 577 caliber carbine. What I'm making is uh, close as I can get it, a replica of the 1855 British Enfield cartridge used a lot by the Confederacy and I'm going to try to show you as best I can how I get there how I arrive at this point. I'm going to start out with the bullet that I'm using. These are uh, the handles notwithstanding. This is a, a Noe, NOE bullet mold for a 566 diameter Pritchett Enfield, well Pritchett bullet, which is a smooth sided I hope y'all can see this. I don't know how this camera focuses in that range. A smooth sided Pritchett bullet. Uh, of course a hollow base cavity just like uh, you know everything, all the miniers of that period. Like I said this one is 566 diameter and by the way I'm going to put links to a lot of the, where you can find a lot of the things that I'm using, a lot of the things I'm talking about in the description. But anyway, since this is 566 going into a roughly 577, 58 caliber bore, you know you don't get there. It'll be a whole lot of windage. That's way too much to make up. So, we're going to leave just as they did. It's going to be a paper patched bullet, essentially, with uh, the paper patched end, in, uh, the, the paper inserted with the bullet, with lube. You know, the whole thing's dipped in lube. The bullet end's in, dipped in lube. I'll be able to talk here in a minute. Anyway, I also uh, mold the little uh, base plug, which I make these out of Bondo. They're supposed to be either boxwood or fired clay. They started out with uh, iron plugs, but the iron plugs tended sometimes to blow through the bullet, so I figure that's going to be bad. Anyway, you see the, the plug fits right in the base. The idea is that's an expander, that the pressure will push that in, because you see it's tapered, just like the the base cavity there is tapered and it will cause it to expand. I don't know if it really does or not. I have tried these with and without the base plug and I do see an accuracy improvement with the plug as opposed to without the plug. So I'm assuming they work. Right here is the mold that they sell for the uh, base plugs. Let's see, that's 50 at a time I believe. Yeah, 50 at a time. And it's pretty easy to use, uh, self-explanatory. Lay it on a good surface, put some wax paper under it, I clamp it down to a, a piece of 2 before. put the Bondo in it, smear it in real hard with a, with a scraper, you know, and, and push it in. Uh, and as soon as it hardens up a little bit, you can take, you know, I use a gasket scraper and just go down there and scrape it off the top side, then turn around and scrape it off the bottom side, and then just push them out and you're done. Uh, pretty straightforward. So anyway, here we go. Let's see. I'll try to try to keep all of this straight, which may be very difficult. What I'm using, this pattern is consists of three individual pieces. These two pieces will be out of nine pound onion paper. I get this off of Amazon. I gave for 500, uh, 500 rounds, for 500 pieces of paper, I think I give 30 bucks or so, maybe give or take a few dollars, shipping and all, might have been a little bit more than that. But I've got a whole bunch of it left and I've had this for two years. So it's not going very fast and you can make quite a few cartridges out, you know, pieces for cartridges out of one piece of paper. So it's not like it's all, you know, going real fast. Uh, this part is uh, out of just regular old printer paper. I'm going to give you the dimensions of these. I didn't bring my templates in here. I'll give you the dimensions of these in the, uh, or I'll give you a link to it with the dimensions in the uh, companion to the new rifle musket, which was the British manual uh, to go with the P53 Enfield. It came out somewhere around 1853, 1855, give or take. So anyway, here's my mandrels. Um, this is my former. And it's just a half inch dowel that I've tapered down to, not really a point, but to a, uh, you know, it's kind of something that resembles the inside of the, the bullet. You'll see where that goes in a minute. And 
the uh, the mandrel itself is again a half inch dowel but I've used masking tape to increase the diameter to 53 to 0.53 and you know for the love of, of everything that's holy I can't remember why I did that but so here's the thing I did I started doing these two years ago and it took me a while just a little bit ago to find my um, the patterns and why my measurements for my part my pieces here are different than the ones that I can find everywhere else and then I remembered I used a different source but this is working and I'm taking too long so anyhow all right what we're gonna do to start off and I'm hoping y'all can see this is if I remember correctly I'm gonna take this rectangular piece I gotta come out here to the edge to get it started I'm gonna hold it flush with the end of the uh, of the mandrel I'm going to kind of make sure I roll it tight tuck it and roll it tight just like that right there now I bring it around where I can hold it with my index finger then we'll take the small trapezoid and I'm not I'm going to leave some of it I'm used to working off the edge of the paper here I'm going to leave about that's probably about a half inch of it or so the uh, mandrel with the other piece wrapped around it powder chamber wrapped around it is about a half inch from the end. I'm going to roll this up. I really hope y'all can see this because I'm going to feel bad if you can't. Roll that up and kind of hold it tight. I think I got that just a little bit long. Tap it down. I'm going to kind of just give it a little bit of a twist like that and then we'll take the former and I'm going to push it into it but when I'm pushing into it I'm going to loosen my grip right here with my thumb and my forefinger on this left hand to let that slip and slide down into it so that I don't push open what I just mashed in there because I kind of want a, a good seal there you don't have to be airtight but you want it to be fairly good and sealed see it's holding on to it now so anyway I'm going to leave that on there I have to remember this how, as I go once again take the bullet with the uh, base plug in it and you get your big trapezoid and I'm leaving about once again about a half inch maybe a little bit more than a half inch I gotta bring it out to the edge of the table here and you're gonna hold it together with a bullet pushed down into the into the uh, cavity and of course this mandrel here has a cavity in the base of it I should have told you that for the bullet to fit in see I'm bad at doing this y'all everybody that wanted me to do this 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 will satisfy you and you won't want me to do anything else anymore <laughs> roll it up decently tight I think I got it just a little bit long and it would help if I had done one of these lately but I have not so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it like that I'm holding it all together and I've got a piece of um, a couple of pieces of, uh, of um, tooth teeth uh, dental floss here tied off to the leg of this and I tied it off too short but I'm gonna wrap it around the edge of that and I'm gonna use this to choke this down I hope y'all can see this If everything goes right, I'm going to choke it down. And it did it reasonably well. This is why you should practice stuff before you turn the camera on. Alright, that choked it off. Then I went ahead and broke me off a little piece of uh, dental floss here to tie the end of it with. This is tying up the end of the, uh, of the, right behind the bullet and the base plug. I know that I'm giving y'all some bad angles. I apologize. All right, now this one's not going to be a, a beautiful cartridge because I, I never do it right the first time. I have to make one or two before they start getting better. All right, as you go to pull the mandrel back out sometimes that inner powder chamber is going to slide out with it uh, it's best to have something that I don't have here like a, an ink pen or a pencil to push that back down in but I pushed the um, the powder chamber body I pushed it back down snug against the nose of the bullet alright so at this point I'm going to get 68 grains I'm using 3F powder like I do for most everything okay 
try not to make a mess with it in the house. But I'm liable to still. Y'all just bear with me. Okay, I'm going to pour that in the open end here. Make sure it's all in there, but sometimes it ain't. Then I'm going to get out here and kind of mash it flat. Leave a little bit. Twist it up some just like this. And then kind of push it down in. Well, that don't look too bad. I did, I did a little bit loose right there, and I don't like the tail on this one. I'll do the next, try to do the next one better. Now, all this cartridge needs to be ready to use is to be dipped in some lube. And I have not melted my lube, but this is my SPG lube. I would normally have it melted, and I would just dip it right up to the... You can tell the difference in the color where the bullet is in here. Just dip it up to the top of that, which is that height right there, as you can see. And then that cartridge is ready to use. Take this out of the way since it's useless. All right. I'm going to try to do one more and make it not look so bad. Sometimes I have to do quite a few of these, you know, three or four before they start smoothing out and I start picking up speed, especially when I haven't done these in six months or a year or something like that. And it's a lot more difficult when I'm talking and trying to tell somebody what I'm doing too because, y'all, I don't pay much attention to what I'm doing when I'm not trying to talk. I'm not able to keep my train of thought sometimes. Is that age or... I don't know. I'm getting younger, so it can't be age. All right. I'm going to have to cut some more of these pieces out. I make uh, templates of all of these components. I make templates of them out of uh, manila envelope paper. Doing them out of tin would be better, but I don't have any tin right now. I guess when I get through this GoX um, tin uh, powder can, I'll have some tin then. I think it's tin anyway. It's close enough to tin. I'm old enough, I still call aluminum cans tin cans. I think every, all our beer cans and everything back then were tin. When I was a kid, during my formative years, and I'm not supposed to do that that way. Jumped it off a little better. Yeah, come on. There we go. Work with me. And of course, now I'm goofing up stuff. I don't know if y'all grew up on Hee Haw, watching Hee Haw like I did. There used to be a thing in there. If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. That's kind of what mine is. Y'all, I have messed that one up, but I'll show you how I fix it. I'm going to roll that back tight around there. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes it happens to me a lot. I don't believe I can get that out of there without, without pulling that inner piece out. Anyway, you know, I can, I'm, it's not like I'm out here shooting, in here shooting or something and missing the target and looking bad. I'm in the house, y'all, and I'm having technical malfunction standing in my kitchen. This is not the way things are supposed to go. I think I'm just making it worse. Well, I could spin it and get it down in there, but you know what? I'll come back to that one. Heck with it. I'm not going to lose completely. We're going to do one right. Please let us do one right. This is where an edit feature would be good, or just knowing how the heck to edit. I could tell y'all, hey, I did it smooth. It wasn't no problem. 
And if you go back and see my old videos, you'll be like, yeah, all right. I don't believe it could change that much. I'll fix that one that I goofed up. It's just a matter of getting down in there with a pair of needle nose pliers and pulling that little inner piece up just a little bit so I can get this other one in it and then it'll go. I ain't going to waste it if I can help it. And there's a trick to getting it to start off tight and finish tight. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. depth just right. <laughs> Makes you want to just hit delete and say the heck with it, don't it? By the way, I want to say thanks to everybody who has subscribed and who sticks with me through this, this mess that I call videos. I noticed today that I had Finally, for the first time ever, 500 subscribers. Y'all, I never I never imagined that they'd be 500 people that would want to see more than just a couple minutes of one video of mine. Whew. But, y'all, I really do appreciate it. And I, and I apologize that sometimes I'm really unprepared. Okay. I apologize that I'm almost always really unprepared for what I'm doing and scatterbrained. Sometimes I'm going to cut just a little off this to make sure it's not overhanging. Size that little end piece down. All right, see if I can hold this one together better. That one actually worked. And it's not really a rare thing. It's just y'all got to see one of my biggest goofs again. Which isn't a rare thing either. Once again, 68 grains of powder. I know they didn't use 3F, but I am. Once I twist it up like that, kind of push it down in there. And it makes a pretty tight cartridge. I mean, it's, it's actually fairly solid. It don't feel like it's going to just come apart when you touch it or, you know, when you reach into your cartridge box and get it out. And, uh, like I said, once again, you dip it in the lube up to the top of the little bullet part there and, and then you're good to go. And then if you look at one of my older videos, I know in the J.P. Murray video from a good, well, two, two winters ago, whatever it was, that, uh, I, I was loading where you could see it. How you tear open the powder chamber, pour that down uh, down the barrel, of course, down the bore. Then you just set that in the barrel. And because we're using this thinner paper, on top of uh, this powder stiffener, which is what this powder chamber thicker piece is, when you go to tear it off and that's in the muzzle, it'll almost tear off perfectly at that line where that comes to. So, you know, roughly, excuse me, right about, roughly right about in there is where it'll tear off to. And just leaves the nose of the bullet sticking up and you ram it home with a paper. You know, I believe back in the day that uh, the Confederate government, if I'm not mistaken, I know they did. I've read that they, uh, that they tested an infield loading it repeatedly using this British style cartridge and it was my understanding that they loaded it thousands of times thousands fired loaded and fired thousands of times reload without swabbing the bore which you could not do with the federal style Burton mini bullet mini mini ball bullet in the federal pattern cartridge you know where you just put the naked 
lubed bullet down the bore and it builds up fouling and everything else. Well this going down powder patched, paper patched, excuse me, um, I'm about to do the wrong thing here. This going down paper patched, it actually swabs the bore. I'm putting that wrong, in the wrong daggum thing. Let me grab another bullet. It actually swabs the bore every time you load it. So they found that they didn't have any fouling problems. And, you know, the Federal ammunition for the Springfield, the 58 caliber ammunition, I know it had a, uh, I believe it was one out of every pack of cartridges that had a, uh, some sort of different metal disc or whatever in it. So it was kind of like a cleaner. It was supposed to scrape out the fouling on the bore when you shot it. That wasn't necessary with this with this British pattern, or the and the Confederates later on also copied the British pattern and used it. Of course, you know they imported a lot too. When they could get it, they had it. So apparently, at least on that aspect. The equipment, I think, that the Confederate soldier had, of course, you know, it wasn't uniform across the Confederacy because there was a lot more supply issues, uh, logistical issues with supply in the, in the Confederate Army than there was in the Federal Army. But uh, my ancestors did all they could to reverse that. Yeah, I got some powder to clean up here too. I'm spilling. When I hush and focus on what I'm doing, I can build up a rhythm and, you know, the more of them I do, the smoother they get. It seems like every time I do a batch of these, the first couple are looser like that you know that's perfectly usable won't be a thing wrong with either one of them and i will fix this one but the last one here is tight just like the ones that i did you know months and months and months ago How, you know i think i did them last november or something that's been that long since i've shot the infield of the jp murray i think it's been since last november y'all i gotta get it out and shoot it because this we're we're about exactly give or take a few days away from the, uh, a month away from the start of muzzleloader season here in Alabama. Well, uh, let's see. Y'all have got to see me goof up some more. I'm going to put some links um, to, like I said, to the bullet mold manufacturer and you know, where you can find it if you want to try it. Uh, this Noe mold and the uh, base plug mold to make the Pritchett's. And, of course, I'll give you uh, links and description of the, uh, of the nine pound onion paper that I got from Amazon that I'm having to make the two trapezoid pieces with. And, of course, I'll give you the uh, link to the, uh, to the source of the dimensions that I'm using. And I really can't think of anything else useful to add. Uh, once again, like I said, I appreciate y'all subscribing, hitting like. Y'all, I really, uh, I enjoy doing this, and, and it, it, it always makes me feel a little better to see that people are watching and comment. You know, hey, if y'all got a question, and I should have left you with plenty of questions, because believe me, I know I'm not describing this as well as I could and well as I should. If you got any questions about any of this, don't, don't hesitate to ask, and I'll do my best to give you a prompt reply to the best of my ability. And if I can't, I'll just have to bow out and say, hey, you got me. Anyway, thanks for watching, y'all.